everybody, my name is Anime Select and welcome to the pilot episode of the Anime Select Select Podcast. Hello, I am Kyla, also known as Anime Select, and I am here with my friend Kim. My, she is going to be my co-host for this series. Say what's up. Hey you guys, how is it going? I'm excited to be here with my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're pretty much two of the um, only, like, anime heads, I guess, if you want to say that, in our group, (laughs) other than a friend that I kind of got hooked on, Death Note, but she, (laughs) but, like, she hasn't been able to find a good anime she likes since. I think I ruined her by accident. Kyla, how could you? I know, I know, There's so much out there. I know, I didn't know (laughs) she would get that involved. I honestly didn't. It shocked me. But, um, yeah, so in this podcast, we are going to pretty much do, uh, I want to say like standard podcast format. So talk about the news, uh, talk about a topic, um, you know, if we get popular enough, then maybe viewer questions. And the thing that I would like us to end on every episode would be um, a recommendation of some sort. Uh, two at least. So a recommendation of either two anime, two manga, or an anime and a manga. Uh, just to try and get a broad range of things for people to look at. You know, it just to um you know end on something nice you know um and they have to meet a certain recommendation for that week um and these are gonna try i'm gonna try and see if we can't do these maybe like um maybe like once a month twice a month We'll, we'll have to see both of our schedules are very um in the air at the moment um, but yeah, I hope that this entertains you guys and that you like it. I'm still trying different things on this channel, and I thought that this would be a nice, easy, fun, quick thing I can give to you guys as I take time to review different shows for you all. So yeah, I hope you enjoy. And with that, on to the news! Woo! Kim! <laughs> do you own Pokemon Go? I don't, but so many of my friends do. How dare you? I'm jealous. How (laughs) dare you? Not own Pokemon Go. Everybody and their mom, literally, our friend's mother, has Pokemon Go now. Like, she convinced her to get it because she didn't want to walk alone at at night. (laughs) But yeah, like so many people, oh my goodness, they... They have been going on and on about Pokemon Go. It honestly looks so cool. I think the only reason I haven't gotten it is because I'm just like, how do I get this on my phone and how does it affect my memory? (laughs) Uh, I I got it and then I remembered I live in the hood, so it's probably not good (laughs) for me to be walking around (laughs) by myself catching Pokemon. Yeah, probably best not to, you know, die in the process. I mean, it's a game that I'm sure many will kill over, but... Oh, we well, don't... maybe not kill, but rob, because yes. Missouri police have said that armed robbers are using Pokemon Go to lure victims for armed robberies. Oh my goodness, this is happening. <laughs> yes, they are setting up um, fake stops, like fake locations to lure in people to go catch Pokemon, but when they get there, instead of seeing like a cool fairy, they see a gun. Oh, so, um, poli- but police have been like sending out warning since the game came out about stuff like that Mm -hmm. you know about being aware of your surroundings Mm -hmm. you know trying not to look suspicious in neighborhoods you know or even just uh you know watching both ways when you cross the street and another story that broke out was a girl um found a dead body in a river what because there was yeah it was like a pokemon spot and she was walking toward it on a trail and found a dead body and it's like the game has only been out a week or so and already all of this is happening yeah (laughs) it definitely shows i guess the game's popularity but then also it it's nice to see that, you know, the police department at least is taking precautions that, 
you know, people will be doing this. They're at least getting the name out there so people are aware. Stay safe, people. <laughs> yeah, stay safe. I know Nintendo's pretty safe now because their stocks have skyrocketed um, following the launch of Pokemon Go, which I've um, apparently, according to uh, the sharehold, according to well, the Anime News Network article, um, that shares at Nintendo Company Ltd. rose as much as twenty five percent in the Japanese market following last week's release of Pokemon wow. Go, and share uh, starting on that Friday, shares have risen to ten percent, and the company's market value rose. To be uh, 718 billion yen, which is about 7.1 billion USD over two days. Wow. Yeah, and I don't even think the game is available in Canada yet. It's just the U.S. and Japan. I think with all the server issues, they were they're delaying the Canadian release. Oh man. Yeah. So just like imagine how much it will grow once like everyone has access to this. This is just the last two days. Whew. It's gonna be I, I find it kinda weird that, you know, they didn't have enough servers. I they I guess they didn't think that it would be this that popular. popular. Yeah. Yeah. But um talking to my boyfriend, who is an IT person, he said that it would actually be a lot more cost-effective for them to have fewer servers and then just add on the more popular it gets. And I, I can see that, but you know, it's like, it, it doesn't build up the game's reputation when mm. servers are down for like four days in a row or like five days in a row, you know? Mm hmm Yeah. Well, I and guess it, like... Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, no, I was just gonna say, yeah, that ain't a good look, man. <laughs> Well, I mean, I guess I was going, like, I was just thinking about all of this and with the popularity it's gotten, I'm just curious how, like, this will evolve in the future, you know? Like, once, they probably threw it out there just to see what the general reactions would be, but I think maybe there was a little bit of that, that underestimation, like, oh, maybe the fan base isn't as big, because Pokemon, I guess... It's had its ups and downs when you think about it. I mean, you have yeah. people that are really hardcore Pokemon fans and have stuck with it. And then there are people that kind of tag along when it gets to the high points um, as far as the trend of Pokemon goes. True, true. But yeah. yeah. As I, I don't know. I imagine it because with our generation, us millennials, we are so um, nostalgia based yes. at this point. Because uh, like almost everything that we grew up with happened so fast, we didn't get a chance to grow really fond of it. And mm. already at the age of like twenty something, we're nostalgic. You know, yes. it, it happens so <laughs> fast. So we're trying to. Um, you know, Pokemon is one of those things that's still going on and we can still be nostalgic about it and also still interested in that's up, you know, something that's updating constantly. So, um, yeah, like, I, I, I just, I don't know. <laughs> I still think that maybe if they had a couple of extra servers, even if they still needed to add on, at least maybe this wouldn't have caused such a delay mm. in everything. With this Pokemon Go, do they have, like, all of the different types of Pokemon or just, like, a limited number and, like, the add-ons are just going to be, you know, the additional Pokemon? Um, as much as... Much as I can tell, they have a wide array, a right, ugh, a wide array of Pokemon. Um, but the thing is, it's like you have to walk to wherever they are. Yeah. Like when I was out with my boyfriend around his house, he had like a a Jinx, two Abras, and I swear a Clefairy. But like I couldn't, I didn't want to walk around and find out where they were. Because they were pretty, they were pretty far. Like they have a little indicator for um, how far a Pokemon is yeah, from you. Yeah, like a few and, steps or more. Like they represent it with, I don't know, um, like some type of animal tracks. Yeah, and apparently they represent like about a hundred meters. So like one footprint, one hundred meters. <laughs> to exactly, they have you walk. I'm thinking like this is like two or three blocks away. <laughs> 
no like that's <laughs> no they are not fooling around we're just gonna have to take a car kyla this is impossible on foot. people have people really have i did that once in the car with my mom while well, she was driving around i opened the app and at stoplights if we had somebody that was catching pokemon in the car <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you go, you guys. If you're going to do this, have a car or have a friend with a car. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or, you know, have a tracker on you, at least. If you're going to be walking around everywhere. Mm. Okay, but the next bit of news. Attack on Titan game trailers and yes. footage. Finally. Oh, my goodness. Finally. <laughs> Finally! I mean, it's bad enough I'm still waiting on season two. Oh, you know, you know I've given up on season two at this <laughs> point. It's been, what, three years? It's better than Penny and Stocking season two, which has still never been ever <laughs> talked about ever. I guess we're just going to forget about it. Okay, never mind. Anyway. <laughs> um, but yes, we have finally gotten footage um, graciously given to us and according, once again, to the Anime News Network article, um, there have been four preview videos um, released to show it. And the game will be called Attack on Titan Wings of Freedom and will ship out on August 26th. Uh, and that's in Europe. In America, it will just be called Attack on Titan and will ship August 30th. The game will get an Xbox One and PC via Steam release in addition to the PlayStation 4, PlayStation 3, and PlayStation Vita versions that are out in Japan. Um, I find it interesting that they're, um, you know, releasing it for PlayStation 3 as well. Xbox, get on your shit. (laughs) We still have Xbox 360s, and we would really like to try and play the game on there. But anyway, in Europe, the game will come with a limited edition uh, treasure box, that they call it, which will feature an art book, soundtrack, muffler towel, six pin badges, and DLC for Artemis' Attack on Titan Junior High outfit. (laughs) And if you're in America and you pre-order the game via Amazon, Best Buy, you know, GameStop, you'll receive downloadable cleaning weapons and costumes for Aaron and Levi and a festival costume for Mikasa. That is a good deal, yeah, and those who pre-order the game digitally on uh, the PlayStation Store or the Xbox Store will get Attack on Titan Avatar. And the thing I found interesting, and I have to say I didn't learn this from the uh, article I'm reading. I actually watched uh, Angry Joe, who is a game reviewer on YouTube. He got to talk with the developers. And I found out through that that the game won't have English dubbing. It will have English subtitles, but the game's audio will be fully in Japanese. So... I mean, give or I take. Mean, I mean, like, the game, if um, people actually, you know, see the videos, I mean, it's it's honestly pretty awesome. Like, the characters, um, in terms of their appearance, and as well as, like, um, the layout of the land and everything, it looks really, like, they keep to the anime and the manga, which is nice. They do. I I guess I'm just worried because in the preview of, like, actual gameplay, like, the actual gameplay is, um, pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. Like, you, um, get the chance to actually attach yourself to buildings mm-hmm. and swing up with the 3D maneuver gear. Yeah. Imagine imagine Spider-Man. Like, <laughs> remember, like, how you could web swing in Spider-Man uh, video games? Kind of like that. And I just, I guess I'm wondering how much of the story you'll miss because that looks like a kind of complicated thing to do and you'll need to pay attention a lot to know where you're going, mm. who you're tracking, and since you... Um, you know, unless you know Japanese very fluently, you're going to miss a lot of story because you're going to have to end up reading um, the little text boxes that pop up sometimes yeah. during actual gameplay. Yeah. So that's that's just what I'm worried about. But other than that, the game looks like it's going to be a lot of fun, especially the Titan mode. Oh, oh I can't yeah. wait. For that. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks like, at least from some of the screen um, screen captions that I've seen um, about the game, that there is a 
parts where you can like go on missions. There are parts where you they even have the training that is similar to what was seen in the manga and the anime, which is nice. So I guess you can practice your titan killing skills before you actually go out there because, well, you don't want to get killed too early in the game. That is yeah. kind of the point. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it, I don't know. It's just... I guess it would be nice just to see, like you said, how it all kind of plays out this plot um, in the game and how, I guess, we see it. We got to see glimpses of, you know, the female Titan and we got to see uh, glimpses of when the Colossal Titan attacked and everything. But, yeah, I guess it's just a matter of seeing how all of this plays out that um, we'll get a better idea. But it's nice what they have so far. They at least have some things um, to work from. Yeah, it is. Like, it seemed kind of like they were going with the... They weren't straying too far yeah. from the uh, anime itself. And I... You know, I, I know that they mentioned about four-player co-op. Mm -hmm. And I'm also excited for that, too. Because, the, the, you know, the whole thing about being on the survey core is about teamwork so it would only make sense that you would have a multiplayer mode mm -hmm. uh i kind of wish that you could add up to more than four yeah uh but you know they're they're doing a lot already <laughs> in terms of uh you know just gameplay in general mm -hmm. uh that I, I won't hold it against them and, you know. like, one thing, um, I don't know if people out there know this, but I think they might have assumed, but you can actually play as um, Aaron's Titan character, so you get to, you know, play from that point of view as well, which is awesome. It is. You're just, like, de demolishing and destroying, <laughs> uh, you know, Titans left and right. It's, it's crazy. You know, just one... You're like One Punch Man. Yes. Just one punch and boom, Titans disintegrate. <laughs> oh, but yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. I, unfortunately, I don't own a X Xbox One or a uh, PlayStation anything, so I'll just be relying on... um Friends. <laughs> yeah, friends. <laughs> friends live streamers uh you know youtube walkthroughs yes. and then maybe maybe my boyfriend will get it and i'll play on his uh steam account you know maybe <laughs> I, I have to talk to him about it um but all right moving on gantz do you know the anime gantz kim um it sounds familiar but i don't think i know it actually Okay, Gantz is probably w one of the first goriest anime I had ever seen at the time. Wait, really? Yes. More than Attack on Titan. <laughs> oh, straight up. Well. Wow. This anime, was, well, it's a, uh, it's adapted from a manga, but, um, you know, it's, uh, it's pretty much, um, Damn, how do I explain this plot? Um, it's pretty much about this guy who gets killed uh, in a train accident and becomes a part of like this game where him and a bunch of other dead people have to hunt down and kill like aliens hmm. that are hidden in Japan. Um, you know, because the first episode starts out with the guy dying and he gets hit by the train. Him and his friend... Well, not friend, but like a classmate that convinced him to help this old man off the tracks. They both get killed. And dude's head goes flying off the screen. <laughs> and mind you, this was made in like 2004? Oh, wow. Yeah, 2004, I believe. And I was like, oh my god. Ah. You know, that was too much. And I mean, by the time I saw it, it was like 2007 or eight. But, like, still, um, you know, that that was whoa for the time. You know, like, whoa. Calm down. Oh, wow. Yeah. I mean, it sounds uh, like an interesting plot, to be honest. It, it is. It is. And I, um, I think that I should be able to get to a review of Gantt soon. But I bring it up because they're doing a um, full 3D CG movie called Gantt Zero. 
And um, apparently, my favorite voice actor, the one, the only Daisuke Ono, is going to be in the lead role. Uh, and that's why I bring it up because I love Daisuke Ono. Like, oh, <laughs> that man can melt butter with that voice. It's great. <laughs> but um, apparently, uh, the chief director of the film is. Uh, he worked on Appleseed Ex Machina, mm. uh, and uh, the guy who did the screenplay for the One Piece Film Gold movie is he's doing the screenplay. Okay. And I mean, it's going to be out in Japan October fourteenth. So I don't know if um, I think I think maybe Funimation has the rights to Gantz now. Hmm. They pretty much have the rights to so almost I'm everything. everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, um, like, I think that um, they might release it, you know, mm. hopefully, but we can only see. Uh, but I'm just excited because Daisuke Ono is getting uh, work, so I know I'm going to end up watching it. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess that means we'll have to uh, get you up to date on, uh, you know, what Gantz is. So I, I'm going to have to get a DVD of it and do a review. <laughs> All right, so that's my next uh, job, I guess. <laughs> but um, all right. Speaking of things coming out, um, Netflix, our dear friend Netflix has a well, they didn't announce, but Studio <laughs> Trigger, uh, Studio Trigger, the brilliant minds behind what people consider a modern masterpiece, Kill a Kill, they announced at Anime Expo that Netflix has licensed the upcoming Little Witch Academia Woo! television anime series to be streaming exclusively on Netflix. Yes. It will be a 30-minute <laughs> television series, and I am so excited. Like, ever since I saw the little first short that um, came out from 2013, and I haven't seen the sequel to that yet, I want to do a review of both of them. Um, and the sequel is Little Witch Academia, The Enchanted Parade. Uh, I'm really looking forward to this series, and I'm kind of shocked that Netflix got this, but I think they're starting to open their eyes to a whole new anime market. Mm -hmm. Especially since, like, you know, Funimation has their streaming stuff, Crunchyroll, of course. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think Aniplex of America has a streaming service, too. I'm not sure, but, yeah, I know Hulu does. Mm -hmm. Hulu does. Yeah. But, yeah, Netflix is, I think, starting to really broaden. Because, you know, they also have that new Voltron show. Oh, yeah. And I've been hearing a lot of good things about it. And even thinking about the amount of anime that is present currently on Netflix, I mean, just some of the names you mentioned, like Crunchyroll, and um, and I, I don't know, I'm just thinking, like, they're probably seeing or noticing that a lot of people really like anime, so they should probably put some more on their, on, yeah. um, their medium so they can appeal to those audiences. I mean, granted, Netflix is doing a great job already, but, you know, they can expand a lot more because a lot of, um, you know, these other big name mediums, they have all the anime on there. So it's like, when you have people on Netflix watching mo different movies and everything, you definitely have a lot of fans who are interested in anime and want to see more on there. So I'm, gr I'm glad that they're actually doing this. And hopefully in the future, they bring more shows to, um, to Netflix for people to watch. Yeah, like, I really am, um, <clears throat> uh, I'm really looking forward to it because, yeah, I, Netflix is, um, in all honesty, I think Netflix down the line might end up um, phasing out being a stream, uh, streaming service for already existing content. It might just be a streaming service for their own original stuff. Mm. Um, but that won't happen for, like, a good number of years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, like, I think they're starting to try and build up something. Because they even did come out and say, like, um, you know, some of their stuff was... They they had like a renewed and cancel mm -hmm. list as well with like other major networks. Yeah, um, I don't really remember what got canceled. I it was nothing remember what... I didn't really watch, so I wasn't concerned. Yeah, pretty much. 
So, you know, they're kind of um, operating on that. And, uh, yeah, I think they're starting to build up their own little thing. Because Netflix does have quite a number of Netflix produced anime oh, or at yeah. least exclusively streaming Netflix anime mm-hmm. and um, yeah I, I just think that is great I think that Studio Trigger really hit a uh, gem with the Little Witch Academia series and I mean that first short was actually kick started and it turned out a lot better than I think what people thought would happen oh wow yeah and um yeah, and Trigger so far has proved itself over and over again to be a really competent studio mm-hmm. that puts a lot of time and a lot of care into their animation. Um, story, you could debate on, but animation-wise, no doubt. Like, they have probably some of the fluid, the most fluid animation that I have seen so far, you know, in this decade. Um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. And finally, Sword Art Online. Ugh, Sword Art Online. Interestingly the- enough, like, about Sword Art Online, I've heard mixed mixed reactions. I mean, I've heard people say it's really good. I've heard people say it's not as great as they were hoping. I have yet to see all of the anime. I've only watched, like, a few episodes. I have to even restart because it's been so long, but... Same. I was going to do a review of it, and I can tell you I made it probably up to around episode 10, probably. Okay. But I was getting frustrated already. But, <laughs> I, but I see people love it. Like a girl in my ceramics class in college, she was our assignment was to make cups, right? And they had to have a theme. And hers was going to be of love. And she actually made a cup and put the swords of the main characters on the front. Oh. And I was the only person who got it because I watch anime like that. <laughs> and I, I didn't watch Sword Out Online, but I I, I knew it and I knew the you know the um symbolism so she wasn't happy with her set and she was like well here since you know what this is I'll give it to you Aww. so I I own a cup with sword <laughs> art online like the symbol of the of the two main character swords and I've never seen the show I don't understand it I've seen people with just little stickers or like chibi mm-hmm. things on them about it and I've been trying to get it and I hope to get it, but yeah, I'm gonna review it down the line. But anyway, um, Sword Art Online is getting a movie. Oh, it's yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's called Sword Art Online the movie Ordinal or Ordinal Scale, I guess is how you pronounce that. I'm sorry, um, and it will premiere in over 150 theaters across Japan and. Pre-order for tickets go on sale July 16th. Wow. Yes. Um, I find it interesting because <laughs> I still can't believe that. I mean, I, I guess I can. I can believe that this thing is still very popular and that they have a lot of, uh, you know, they, they have a pretty strong fan base. Mm-hmm. I know that they're, I know the anime is pretty much based off of a uh, visual, no, not a visual novel, um, a light novel series. Mm-hmm. And that's still ongoing. So I wonder if whenever he gets done with whatever arc he's working on right now, if they'll, you know, do another season of Sword Art Online based on that. But, um... Aniplex of America presented a new English subtitle trailer for the film during uh, Anime Expo, and the movie, they confirmed that the movie will also be released overseas. So, for all you Sword Art Online fans, you have not just that to look forward to, but as well, the new game. You need to get a movie and a game. Oh, wow. S- Sort yes, (laughs) Sword Art Online Hollow Realization just got a new English trailer, and it will be coming out on PlayStation Four and PlayStation Vita. Um, You know, and the game will ship in Japan on October twenty second, not twenty second, twenty seventh, and Bandai Namco Entertainment will release the game in America and in Europe in the fall. 
but and the collector's edition looks like a whole lot of junk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's just it's a lot. It's a lot. You get figurines, the Whoa. game, uh, mini posters and decals, sheets, a art book, a Blu-ray bonus disc, oh, collector's edition packaging. Like it looks so. You get the soundtrack and a steel book too. It's Whoa. like it's so much stuff. They really want people to. I guess they want really want to make their fans happy. Yeah, I'll give them that. I'll give them that. <laughs> they know how to do it right. <laughs> they do. But yeah, like, oh man, Sword Out Online, it's uh, unwielding, uh, well, unwielding and unyielding popularity never ceases to amaze me. And I hope to understand it or at least try to grasp why so many people like it, even though I can already tell I'm one of those people that just (laughs) won't. Well, I mean, from as far as the anime goes, from what I heard from people, it seems like it really picks up in season two. Now, this can be debated by those who watch it. I I have yet uh, to really. is Is it the Gun Gale arc? I think. Because, like, season one kind of, from the way it looks, it splits to be, like, Sword Out Online, and then they're, like, in this other fairy-type game. Oh. Um, Alfheim Online, I think it's called. Something like that. And, um, the, like, the avatars change or whatever, but apparently they could switch their gamer avatars from Sword Out Online into this other game, a.k.a. we don't really have to change the character design for the new world because we're lazy. <laughs> and, uh... You know, in the official season two, I know they switch games entirely yeah. to being yeah to being Gun Gale online, and um, yeah, I I do hear that the second season is a lot better because it actually deals with um, Kirito, the main character. He he has um, P uh, PDS. Uh, PTSD. Mm-hmm. There it is. PTSD from, you know, being trapped in Sword Art Online. And, you know, I was like, oh, well, that's interesting. I hope they do something with it. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, I hope they do. I hope they did. <laughs> I hope they address mental illness. Yeah. And I almost wonder if I want them to with how <laughs> well they address everything else. Well, I mean, I'm also like thinking about this game a little bit more too i mean it's nice to see that they made it into a game i mean a an anime that deals with the virtual world you would hope would be made into a good game yeah like i always wondered why they never well they did make dot hack into a game and but i wonder why they never really brought that back up and made it like into an online multiplayer multiplayer game you know yeah because Dot Hack is kind of like, um, you know, it didn't really do anything different, but it kind of got the idea in everybody's minds about, you know, a uh, a world, a video game, virtual world where people would be trapped in. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. Oh my God, why is that guy honking his horn like that out there? He's Sorry. trying to find Pokemon. He might be. <laughs> They're not here anymore. <laughs> I caught all the Weedles. <laughs> oh, but, yeah, so that was the news. All the links to the articles we referenced will be down in the description below for you to take a look at. So, on to the topic. So... With the way the world has been lately, Ooh. it's been shit. <laughs> <laughs> to say the least. Yeah, to say the least, it's been shit. And around times like this, a lot of people need to clear their heads, you know, detox a bit. And they often do it by either listening to their favorite music, going for a walk, or even watching their favorite show. So... I thought that this, uh, you know, month's topic would be, or, you know, this week's topic or whatever would be, um, you know, anime that we watch that, you know, makes us us happy. Yeah, that relaxes us, that makes us happy, that leaves us in a good mood when we're done (laughs) watching it. Because we really, we really do need that, you know. 
Yeah, more than ever, we really need it because, yeah, everything is so hostile. Everything is just, you know, there's in, injustices and uh, just craziness all around. We really just need to all sit back, relax, and try to watch some nice, calming anime. So, uh, do you have anything to start with? Um, well, actually, I was thinking a lot about it just from what I've watched, and I realize I watch a lot of just action-y anime, but there's there's some relaxing anime I, I um, watch from time to time. Um, one that I really like is Fruits Basket. It's, oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember that one. <laughs> it's lighthearted. There's, you know... Oh, tiny bit of romance but you know it's not like overwhelming and it's funny so could, uh could you give a summary for everybody like just a quick run through of what the show is about yeah so um there's this main character called toru honda and she attends i believe it's middle school from what i remember um she has two friends but um she um, she doesn't have any parents, so she lives, um, for the most part, on her own. She encounters people in her school that happen to, I guess, how much should I give away, um, that happen to represent um, animals from the Chinese Zodiac, but they're present as, you know, human beings upon, you know, first glance. But then they change into their animal um, counterparts whenever they're hugged. So, ah. yep. So then the plot thickens. <laughs> so she gets more involved with, um, you know, more and more members of, I guess, the 12 Zodiac um, signs. And as she does so, she uncovers different um, truths about them, whether it's each individual character or, um, I guess this overlying curse that has them changing to animals and um, without giving too much away, there's more to it. But um, she goes on to, you know, uncover, I guess, everyone's, um, I guess, hidden side that they didn't really want to show yeah. to people. So it's really nice. It's really lighthearted and it's funny. Most of all, it's funny. And I can't remember if I started... I started watching the anime, and then I read the manga, and then I think I went back to the anime. I mean, I read all the manga. Read the manga, too. It's great. Um, they definitely show more was, than the anime. I was going to say, how many volumes of that manga were there? I remember there being quite a bit. Oh, yeah, there was. And then yeah. they have a second one that came out not too long ago, which was great. Oh, okay. Um... Uh... Yeah. All right. <laughs> well, let's see. Um, I one of my favorite ones that I like to revisit is the. Of course, I guess from what I've seen on packaging, it's now considered an anime classic. Or on high school. Oh Host my Club. gosh! <laughs> <laughs> it's funny you said that because I was going to mention that in this. <laughs> yeah, like, okay, for, so for those of you who don't know, Oran High School Host Club is a, um anime and a manga mm -hmm. which follows um, Haruhi Fujioka, a scholarship student who goes to Oran High School Host Club. Uh, not host club, but Oran High School, which is a very posh and prestigious school, mostly for uh, richer people, you know, and Haruhi is poor. Um, she ends up in the host club dressed up very frumpy by the way uh, no everyone thinks that she is a boy when she first walks in so she goes there she's confused meeting different members of the host club you know um tamaki kyoya the twins and in her confusion she breaks a vase a very expensive vase <laughs> so she has to work off her debt by working in the host club and at the end of the first episode they find out you know that she's actually a girl and uh you kind of see that that there might be a romance box blossoming between Haruhi and Tamaki. And pretty much the whole show is a romantic comedy that um, really does a nice job of creating a satire on common cliches and um, 
that you find a lot in shoujo anime. You know, especially like with the twins, they really play up that kind of like uh, forbidden love incest feel with the girls because they know, like, they know how to work that angle. Like, <laughs> they do. <laughs> they, they've already been really close to each other in life, you know, due to some sadness. That That is one thing, you know, the show will give you the feels every now and again. Oh, yeah. Surprisingly, it will give you the feels. <laughs> but, you know, um, yeah, it's a nice little reverse harem that uh, is really funny. It makes you laugh, makes you cry sometimes but overall it's it's a good time it's a really good time and i recommend it to anyone who um you know just wants to have a laugh especially i think it kind of gets better when you have the episodes that are dedicated to honey senpai because <laughs> uh, honey senpai is just he's the cutest little thing and then he just goes off like, at a moment's notice sometimes, and it's just the best. <laughs> also, Tamaki's expressions. <laughs> it's just, like, oh, man. But, but yeah, Oran High School Host Club is a really good one. I don't know if you had anything to add on, Oran, since you were going to mention it before. Oh, no, you covered it, like, perfectly. I... Oh my goodness, I love that. <laughs> I love that anime. It's just, it, it leaves you laughing. It's, I mean, again, another lighthearted anime. And yes, it definitely gives you the feel sometimes. But overall, it's just, it's very uplifting. And it's what we need during these times. Yeah, really. Um, all right, you got another one for us? Um, yeah, I actually wanted to um, switch it up a bit from what we were saying. Um, still a pretty lighthearted anime. Um, a little bit, I guess, a, more of a sense of re- realism. Not to say that, you know, the anime we mentioned doesn't have their own sense of realism. But um, this one is, you know, more rooted in this could actually happen. Um, Beck, like Mongolian Chop Squad. I don't know if you... Oh, I've heard of that, but yeah. I never saw it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I actually watched it um, some years ago with my mom. And, oh my goodness, we, we weren't expecting to like it so much, but we, we definitely loved it. I guess it was just, um, you follow this main character, um, Koyuki. Um, he meets um, this c- guitarist, Ryusuke, and he just, you know, discovers this, I guess, he has a passion for music, but um, it's through Ryusuke that he begins to, I guess, engage with music a lot more. Yeah. They have a band and everything, so um, I believe one of the, uh, one of the people in the band um, wasn't able to play and they were trying to you know pretty much I guess kickstart their dream you know dream yeah. music life and so the main character fills in um, so he has to learn essentially how to play the guitar and through these lessons and um, through these adventures and interacting with the characters in the band and the those associated with the band um he we see him grow as a character and that's really cool so i mean it also it has a lot of good music in it which is nice so yeah i mean that is nice that would kind of suck if you had a <laughs> musical anime and then the music was horrible too oh yeah that would not mesh pretty well <laughs> No, that would be horrible. I would be so mad. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's a really great anime, and it's something that, um, you know, I guess people wouldn't necessarily expect it to, um, you know, really be good, because I guess it it just doesn't appear that way initially, because I guess it's so different from a lot of the anime that it is popular and out there. But it's yeah. something different, and it's something that you can really get into if you give it a chance. So give it a chance, everyone. <laughs> Alright, you heard it. Give it a chance. Alright. Um, I'm going to mention 
uh, anime that is very near and dear to my heart was one of the one of the first ones that I've ever seen. Really? Uh, and that one would be Lupin the Third oh, Part yes. Two. <laughs> yeah, Part Two specifically, more known as the Red Jacket Saga. Um, Lupin the Third, if you do not know, Lupin is a um, master thief, a direct descendant of Arsène Lupin, uh, the famous French thief of um, literature. Uh, and he is a, uh, like I said before, he's a thief. And you follow him and his companions on their different journeys of, you know, thievery and, um, you know, crime and whatever. And they are being followed around by Inspector Zinigata, uh, commonly known as Pops. And he always tries to foil Lupin's schemes, but Lupin always manages to get away. And I feel that out of all the Lupin the Third series, because there's a new one happening right now as really? we speak. Yeah, this one takes place more in uh, Italy, hmm. and it's dealing off of the same kind of style mm-hmm. that the last Lupin the Third steer- series did, which was the woman called Fujiko Mine, which I did do a review on, but it got copyright. Right. <laughs> Gotta love those. I know, right? So, uh, quick rundown of my review of the woman called Fujiko Mine. I felt that it, the style was nice, the animation was great, the story was a bit off, and the ending was infuriating. I believe I gave it a 7 out of 10. Like, I still say you should check it out, but also beware for child abuse, uh, notions of rape, implied rape, and things like that. Nice. Uh, you know, just to be safe. Um, but anyway, I, p- I picked the part 2 because it's the more lighthearted of the um Lupin saga. It was made around in the 70s, so you know, it's kind of gotten that that retro feel to it, you know. And um I just I just really like how Lupin's a lot more carefree in this. Uh he still has a very cunning personality, but he's a lot sillier in this. And I often go to it when I really just need a laugh. You know, like the characters will make English references that they probably shouldn't know. Like I remember one episode, Jigen, his uh, gunman, mentioned that he was from Chicago, and I'm like, dude, what? <laughs> like what? <laughs> um, you could obviously tell I, that was, um, you know, I believe, I think ADV had the. Uh, uh, dub had the license to it before um, Funimation got it, I believe. Uh, but yeah, I I just really love Lupin the Third Part Two for a good laugh. <laughs> it, it's just it's silly. There's so many episodes. Actually, I believe that almost all of the parts of Lupin series are on Hulu. Actually, you know, if you want to go check that out, and they should still be for free. But yeah, like I just. Love that series to death. If you need a good laugh, uh, go ahead and watch it. Lupin the Third, Part Two. Um, I guess I have one. Um, I guess if you're more looking for, you know, that sense of romance and um, a lot of shoujo, <laughs> I would, I would say, um, check out Say I Love You. This actually became an anime fairly recently. I think it's been out for, uh, and I'm oh. spitballing, like maybe six, six-ish. No, I think even a little bit more than that. Maybe nine, about nine months, I would it's, say. Yeah, uh, it looks like it's it's done, but it was it's was streaming on Crunchyroll and the episodes are still up in case anybody wants to check it out. Yeah. And I mean, like I said, just something, um, rom- you know, with romance, with shoujo, pretty much it follows this, um, main character, May T- Tachibana, um, through, um, high school life essentially. And, um, also through, I, I guess, we discover through this guy that she ends up meeting through an interesting encounter, um, who ends up also becoming her love interest, 
that she herself as a person opens up more and um, gets more friends and is able to connect more with people. So, you know, if you're looking for something like that, I would say, you know, try it out. It, it's definitely a gr really good great anime and I've read the manga I love it the manga is still going on but um like I love I l really like the storyline and I wasn't expecting to so the anime it's not that long so you can definitely finish it within a good time period so if you're looking for something short as well this would be a good thing to look at as well all right um I'm also gonna go back on my little retro rewind and mention an anime that um, I'm pretty sure a lot of people know about. Um, those Obnoxious Aliens. Um, a really little fun anime that was rec to, recommended to me by a friend back in 2008. Um, this is a comedy. I guess it would be considered a eh, it could be considered a romantic comedy made by Ruby called Takahashi. It was a manga, and then it got adapted into an anime. And um, if you don't know who Rumi, uh, ah, Rumi called Takahashi is, well, then I'm sorry for you because <laughs> her show Inuyasha just, you know, that Ooh. sucker's been going on for forever. Yes. And it just recently ended. And yeah, she made Inuyasha. Um, you can kind of tell uh, with this show just about like the blueprint that she worked mm -hmm. on for Inuyasha. Not to say that they're like completely the same, but you can kind of get some of those notes a bit. Um, but yeah, um, those obnoxious aliens are... It's the story of these aliens called the Oni uh, who arrive to Earth. And this one alien named Loom, who is a princess, uh, really starts to like this... Um, uh, student uh, At Ataru I believe is his name um, and they uh, you know a kind of a romance blasts amongst them despite Ataru you know not really wanting one you know it's mostly Loom who's always like oh my god like I want to um, marry you or whatever like she falls in love with them and it's, it's kind of like that a reluctant romance, but it's really fun. It was made back in uh, like the not the seventies, uh, uh, the eighties, I believe, like around that time, the early eighties, and it, it has that that retro feel I mentioned before to it, and it's just it's really cute, you know. Uh, the the character designs are really cute. Uh, the opening intro animation is cute and the ending song is cute it's it's just all cute if you need a cute overload go watch um you know those obnoxious aliens you know <laughs> it's it's just cute <laughs> that's all i have to say is it's cute also i'd like to correct myself from earlier um say i love you was actually um i guess released in 2014 but somehow it seems like the months go by please give it give me credit you guys like i was in college <laughs> <laughs> my life was gone you're like it's just all running together exactly so just wanted to put it out there in case you guys want to hunt me down with pitchforks for getting the date wrong it was released in 2014 but it's still fairly recent that's so. it. You're, that's it. You're fired. <laughs> you're fired. You're an idiot. Oh, sorry, you guys. I tried. I tried. Oh, you're hired. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, okay. Let's see. You got uh, another one for us, by perchance? Um... I don't know if I can. Th I'm. I feel like there is some up there that in my like mind that I have watched, but for the life of me, I cannot like think of them. Besides, I guess maybe more obvious ones. I was gonna say, do you want a moment? Uh, yeah. <laughs> if you have any, like, feel free to go ahead. Yeah, I got a couple of more. I. 
often watch uh, comedies, like just straight up comedies a lot of the time. So, um, okay, one that uh, actually might be considered obvious, but is also considered a classic, Excel Saga. Um, Excel Saga is pretty much the story of Excel, a um, kind of minion or a lackey or whatever you want to call her, to this guy named Il Palazzo, and he wants to take over the planet. So it's Excel's job, along with her partner, who always dies, Hyatt, uh, to make sure that his schemes go well, and of course, Excel is a complete fucking moron, so it (laughs) never works. Um... But Excel Saga is really just an out there kind of non sequitur show that breaks the fourth wall a lot. Like, made by Koshi Rikudo, who also appears in the anime as himself a lot of the time. Uh, You know, it's a very quirky show. And it's very, uh, it's very funny. Like, even though the opening prepares you for what you're about to see as the two girls are singing their own theme song and Hyatt is like just coughing up blood during it (laughs) and they just are in random places like they're in the street singing they're in a bathhouse singing they're like on a playground singing like it makes no sense but you know it's a very fun little show to watch and I recommend it if you're ever feeling down and you need a laugh I don't really it should still be I want to say hopefully Crunchyroll has it because um, actually I think Funimation may have re-released the DVD on this one so never mind I think you can pick it up through them okay um oh did you have anything else to add before uh not to Excel Saga um well um, I just remembered an anime that I have watched and also um, read the manga of School Rumble. I don't know if you're familiar with it or have oh, heard about it. Yeah, I remember. I, I think I tried to watch that before, but I, I don't. It was a while ago. <laughs> like a while ago. Yeah, like the first time I watched it, it was some years back, but then I um, rewatched it maybe a couple maybe a year or a couple of years ago um just to get back in it because sometimes you need it um i think it's a really hilarious um romantic comedy um also a little bit of shoujo i mean they're in their high school stage so you get a little bit of that um i guess i would say I don't know if you would really say you follow any one character because you get to kind of see the lives of multiple characters and how they interact. But I would say the main character of School Rumble is um, Tenma. She has a younger sister who's actually much taller than her. So, And it seems like most of the time... Um, she could be the older sister because she's also more mature than Tenma. Mm. But, um, yeah, you, um, get to see, like, their interaction. You get to see, um, an interaction between, I guess, she has, she, Tenma herself has a love interest. And then there's someone also in the school that has the hots for her all right (laughs) but she doesn't like she likes someone else so it's like it's this just chaotic and hilarious um anime with just these different storylines and it's like when i say chaotic i'm not playing (laughs) but it's really it it's really funny you get a good laugh out of it and it's really random and out there and i just love it for that so definitely recommend school rumble and school rumble forever (laughs) school rumble forever (laughs) she is a diehard oh yeah they they got me they got me good All right, I think the last, I think I only have about two more that I could recommend, um, or that, you know, I will recommend in our first show. I think I'll save the other one for just my ending recommendation of, uh, stuff. But, um, I have to recommend the ever wonderful, and I think the one anime that's not talked about nearly enough 
space dandy. <laughs> I mean, it's like watching Johnny Bravo in space. <laughs> How could you not? Okay, Space Dandy is brought to us by the wonderful uh, lead team that got us Cowboy Bebop, what is considered oh, yes. not just an anime classic, but just a classic of television almost at this point. You know, yeah. it's just so wonderfully done. And um, it's the, like the producer, um, Mas- uh, Masahiko Minami, I believe is how I pronounce his name, and of course the ever wonderful Shinero Watanabe, was, they were involved in Space Dandy. And pretty much Space Dandy involves this guy, Space Dandy. He is a dandy in space. <laughs> and it is his job, well, he kind of makes it a job and makes a living out of going around and finding unidentified aliens in the galaxy and bringing them into a um, registration place. It's kind of like in Cowboy Bebop where, you know, you pick up a bounty, you go turn them in and you get money. So, like, you pick, find an alien that's not registered in the registry, uh, you take them to this place, they get identified and you get money. So it's like him, uh, this alien or Beetle Juicy, uh, Juicyan, um, Meowth. Now Meowth, oh my God, he looks like Meowth, but it's not Meowth. It's Meow. Like, uh, oh my God, <laughs> it's Meow, Meow. Okay, um, and his robot QT on his ship, the Aloha Oi, as they go through space and like. Every episode is just a really, like, little special adventure. The plot is kind of in the background. It takes a backseat to just Dandy and these antics. And the animation is stunning. Like, Mm -hmm. oh, my God. It's just so beautiful. And the, um, the colors, everything is so bright. And I think that we've been losing touch in that. We're we're starting to see it come back. a lot more vivid anime, not like just pastel colors or like even darker colors, but just very bright anime. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's good, especially if you're going to have all this in space, you yes. know. Space has to be different, has to be colorful, has to be vibrant, and they really did succeed. And the comedy in the show is just really great. I mean, it goes from having a Hooters-type parody <laughs> restaurant, just straight up called Boobies. Um, yes. You know, Danny's <laughs> wonderful uh, love of the booty, because, yeah. I mean, really, the... the the booty is probably one of the best things ever made <laughs> uh, by human, you know, by humanity. So you know, there we go. But um, Chris Evans, <laughs> I uh, Robert Downey <laughs> Jr. <laughs> <laughs> Jared Pell, like <laughs> God, duh! I gotta get this out of my throat. <laughs> you Whew. know, you guys like it. You know. <laughs> But yeah, um, Space Dandy, I have to end on with my fun time recommendations because you can just binge the show. It's that good. And it will leave you in a really good mood for the rest of the day. Like, it's just great. Well said. Thank you. (laughs) Uh, Do you have one that you would like to leave us on? Um... Hmm. I I do not. I feel like like I said earlier, I'm sure there's one in my head. There isn't really, I guess, one coming to mind. I guess like, you know, as far as it's not really a show as much as it's a movie. But, you know, it's going back, and the animation's really good. Yeah, just uh, say that. I mean, that works. Kiki's Delivery Service. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It just holds a special place in my heart. Yeah, (laughs) that movie is cute. It's really cute. Yeah. And all the movies that came even either before it or after it, like, I mean, those can pretty much be recommended. Those movies are meant to relax you. (laughs) True. Very true. Oh, but yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't even think I can really... I, I should even really speak on this because I feel like everyone has heard of it to some capacity. But... Yeah, I mean, 
mean, it's just, you can look it up and eat, just its visuals are really adorable. Oh, so yeah. So cute. Yeah, so if you, you know, just want to watch maybe a movie instead, I definitely recommend that one and, um, like, any others you could find. You could just go down the list and see. I mean, it's a really, really great director and... I mean, like Kyla said, the visual effects are just great and amazing. So, my goodness, I'm just thinking of all the movies now. <laughs> oh, wow. All right. I was going to say, so you can uh, pick one for the ending recommendation because we're just about to hit the... Um, we. I, I'm trying to figure out what the a good limit is on these podcasts, and I'm thinking like about an hour or so, so we're pretty much at the time yeah limit. yeah um, do you I, want to recommend anything yeah i have a um i have another anime recommendation and then i have a manga recommendation okay to end the show out and this is just a i guess we'll just go general with these you okay. know since we kind of had a specifics um okay, okay. Well, the anime I would like to recommend to you all this time is actually uh, one that I feel slipped under the radar of people, hmm. and that would be Death Parade. I am planning a review for it, um, but Death Parade, I feel, is a very interesting uh you know, a very interesting anime that uh, has a very interesting premise. So when people die, um, they end up going to kind of this limbo place called Quindecum. And there's a bartender there named um, Deckum who has a... he. The, when the people die, they don't remember who they are or how they got there or, you know, any, anything about what's going on. So Deckham pretty much forces them to play this game together. And as they're playing this game, their lives are on the line. They think that, you know, one person will leave or one person will get out when in reality they're being judged before they're sent to their final places for death, either being, you know, ascended into reincarnation or pretty much going down to an endless void. Um, you know, and it deals a lot with relationships, you know, duality in that. And it's just a really interesting show that can catch you off guard a lot of the time with how deep these, uh, you know, the individual people that come in, you know, their stories and them trying to figure out, well, what happened? How did I get here? Because they're trying to remember their whole life, like their whole life and what led them to be in the you know, Quindecum. And the animation is lovely. It has probably one of the most unassuming... It has probably one of the best openings I've seen. Uh, so, you know, up there in, like, a top list. And it's very unassuming because it's very happy. It's very vibrant and loud and kind of, like, flashy. And then you get to the show and it's, like, all about just death and kind of sadness and, like, hostility because they're playing a game and they think someone's going to die. So it's like, oh, I got to make sure I win so this sucker can die and I don't have to. You know, it's <laughs> it's just really interesting and I think it went under a lot of people's radar and so I want to bring more attention to it. But you can also expect a review of that sometime in the future um manga I, I'm gonna do a manga recommendation and I would have to say um as obviously as, as obvious as this may be I would say Death Note if only because they're starting to you've seen it haven't you the new black edition uh manga volumes that they have Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, mostly because they're really beautiful and I really yes. want to own one. <laughs> <laughs> but also, uh, the Death Note manga is just a really... I think it's a nice... You know, you should also read that if you've ever seen the anime. I just think it's a nice little, um, you know, thing to have and to own. Mostly mm -hmm. because you also get a lot of more... You get a lot more interaction between Melo and Nier. <laughs> yes yeah than you did in the anime and you also get to see Matt other than the like two seconds he was in the anime you know you get to see more of all of that 
plot that happened in the second season where I feel like they were trying to condense and cram it all in fast Mm -hmm. to work up to the ending of the series. Yeah. But yeah, so go check it out, especially now since they're really condensing everything down into like the Black Edition volumes, uh, you know, which I believe may have like two, three issues in one. So yeah, uh, go pick those up. Alright. So, you got a recommendation? For anime or manga? It could be, uh, you know, an anime or a manga, two manga, two anime. No theme, just if you <laughs> want to, like, let the people know. Okay. Well, I guess, um... For manga, for me, I have to go back to um, Attack on Titan or Shingeki no Kyojin because, well, despite my frustrations with the anime, (laughs) (laughs) um, it's like you get to, with the manga, you get to know so much more. Like, there's so much more to the story in terms of where the Titans come from, why the Titans are attacking why like there's i mean so much so that there is a governmental system that has its secrets to all of these things so it's like if you want to really know more and un- maybe gain like a better understanding of the attack on titan universe i would highly recommend reading the manga especially since i don't even know when the anime is going to continue and i don't even know how much they will cover yeah good point yeah so if i that's just that's just something i guess that's always been with me that i'm thinking how are they going to represent all of this and of course the timeline for attack on titan the anime i mean yeah, it's going on three years, so I wouldn't really wait that long to get a sense of what the story is all about. Yeah, so just that is my well. recommendation. All right. Um, okay. I think that's about it, since we kind of really just talked and gave like a lot of recommendation <laughs> for anime in this episode. Um, you but know, hey, you can get started on that summer list. That's true. I think that <laughs> might be, um, I think that'll be the next one. Uh, you know, maybe we can look at and see some summer anime titles that we're really either looking forward to or that we've already watched and maybe get a quick run through, you know, mm-hmm. if we, yeah. if we have the time. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, Please, guys, let me know what you think of this. I need feedback. I need feedback. Um, You know, do you want us to talk about a certain topic? Do you like the way we have this formatted? This is a pilot. So, please, just just let me know. You know, we're here to improve. We're here to learn. We're here to grow. We want, you know, we want to understand and, you know, make the we we want to entertain you guys essentially we want yes. to entertain you guys and you know we we just want to do a good job at it yes so thank you all for tuning in to the anime select select podcast my name is kyla aka anime select and this is kim hi <laughs> <laughs> And we wish you all a good night. Thank you for joining us. Night, you guys. Good luck pa- catching your Pokemon. Yeah, please be safe. <laughs> <laughs> don't go to like if it looks sketch. Don't go there without a weapon or something, a stick. Or run in the other direction is best too. <laughs> yeah, please. All right. Good night, guys. Go catch them all. Night, you guys.